This is Petri Hawkins Bird, and you're watching realurbannews.com. This is Judge Judy. Hawkins Bird is one of the most recognizable personalities in daytime television. He's the bailiff on the number one daytime television show, Judge Judy. I'm Michael Real, and this is RealerBenews.com. We speak with the bailiff exclusively on the set. Are you surprised that you have spent 20 years on the set of Judge Judy? Um, I think anybody who tells you that they've spent 20 years doing anything is a little surprised. And, you know, uh, Kobe just spent 20 years on the same team, you know, and broke a record being on the same team. So uh, I feel like I'm in good company uh, when I say uh, I'm surprised to be 20 years on this show on, on TV and, and have it. Uh, continue at the successful level that it's always been. Mm -hmm. In fact, probably even greater. You do have a law enforcement background in real life. Uh, originally, I was a court officer in New York. Um, I worked in Manhattan Family Court uh, from 1986 to 1990. And uh, that was where I met my once and future boss, uh -huh. uh, Judge Judy Shinelin. Um, and uh, uh, I moved out to California in 1990. Um, uh, moved up to Northern California, the Bay Area. Uh, worked for the U.S. Marshal Service for a little while. Um, then left law enforcement and went to work uh, as a high school counselor at Monte Vista High School in uh, Santa Clara up there. And while I was there, uh, I happened to read the paper one day on a coffee break and sure. happened to read about a judge that I once worked with in Manhattan Family Court, uh, Judy Shiny, and that uh, she had written a book uh, don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. <laughs> um, shameless plug for you people. It's still available, I'm sure, in bookstores. It's a sure. good read. Um, I read the book, uh, and I wrote a letter to congratulate her uh, on her upcoming TV show that they were developing for. And I was kidding around the end of the letter, and I said, hey, if you ever need a bail, if I still look good in uniform. Uh -huh. Well, about three weeks later, she called me and uh, thanked me for the congratulatory letter and said, uh, I know you were kidding, but we do need a bailiff. We tried it with a regular actor and um, need somebody, it's an unscripted show, we need somebody who knows how I kind of how I operate. You know? She said, as I recall, you, you're kind of crazy. I said, yeah, well, I'm still kind of crazy. She said, well, if you're crazy enough to try this with me, uh, I'll recommend you for the job. And uh, the rest, as they say, is history. And you're still in great shape. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, 20 years later, I'm, I'm in great shape, uh -huh. you know, for an old guy. What's it like working on the number one uh, daytime television show? Uh, remarkably speaking, man, it's, 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 uh, it's pretty much like it's always been. We haven't, we haven't changed uh, our delivery in 20 years, and so, uh, um, you know, um, what surprises me usually is, is what she says as opposed to what the, the cases. Our cases are, are they, they kind of happen over and over and over again. You know, we have uh, the, the dogs biting dogs, dogs sure. biting man, you know. Right. Uh, but, uh, but what's always amazing is how she deals with it and the things that she says about it, you know. So, uh, so it's still a joy to come to work. It's not, you know, I've, I've worked hard and I've worked smart. Mm -hmm. I like working smart. Mm -hmm. Talk about your role because you are such a force and such a presence. Although quiet and confident, it does make a difference. Security is a funny thing, you know. When you have it and it works, you barely notice it's there. And when you need it and it works, that's when you notice what it's worth. So, you know, um, I come out, I do my thing, I call the cases, uh, 
I'm there if she needs me, you know, to bounce something off of, and uh, uh, I make sure that the papers get from one end of the courtroom to the other. That's pretty much. That's pretty much it. Yeah. What do you want people to know about this show that we don't see uh, sitting in our living rooms watching? Um, I guess that. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot more that goes on behind the scenes than, you know, it's sort of like the tip of the iceberg thing. That's what, that's what people see, you know. So it's, it's like, it's like a, a, a news story that, sure. you, that you would see on the, uh, on the 11 o'clock news, you know. You see three minutes of it and you go, oh, well, good, I know everything they know. And sure. behind the scenes, you know, uh, there's a lot of preparation, there's a lot of uh, 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 reading that has to be done. There's, interviews that have to be done and so to put the cases together you know it's not like oh yeah they were standing outside the door and we started rolling the cameras and they just walked in sure. you know there's a lot of preparation that goes into it uh, and a lot of thought that goes into the show. Your talent uh, has you doing voiceovers, mm -hmm. uh, some singing, yeah. some writing, Yeah. Uh, talk about that and then talk about what's next. It's funny I've always been uh, very imitative in regards to uh, voices ever uh, since I was a kid. So, um, so, and I, I, I love animation. So, um, uh, so one of my goals is to continue to try to do voiceover animation. You know, uh, it's a competitive business, very, very competitive business, especially sure. now where a lot of people are doing uh, things from their home uh, sure. system and, and, you know, setting up uh, home studios and everything. But I, I continue to try to. Uh, 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 audition for those for those roles, those few roles that they leave open. So uh -huh. you know, so Andrea Romano, if you're listening, I'm <laughs> still here and I'm still trying to get uh, on one of those superhero uh, sure. animation specials. Um, uh, singing, wow! Um, I have a song. I actually have a song out on CD, baby. Uh, it's called "This a New Day," and it's a song that I wrote. Uh, a friend of mine who is a blind uh, pianist. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gave me some music, and and he thought he thought he wanted me to write a poem to it. Okay. Instead, I wrote um, a song to it, um, speaking about how we address one another and, mm. what, and what we what we call one another, particularly in the black community. Sure. And uh, and uh, I had the good fortune of being able to record the song, do all the background vocals. Uh, uh, I, I've always been a fan of Marvin Gaye, so sure. so the overdubs were 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 great. Uh, Chaka Khan called me the other day. And, uh -huh. uh, to tell me how much she enjoyed the song and, and, and that she wanted to work with me. And I went, <laughs> Chaka Khan, okay, I'll, right. I'm there, Chaka Khan, I'm right. there. You know? Chaka Khan. Um, so uh, so um, that, that was great. And then an opportunity, my son did the rap on mm -hmm. the song. So, uh, so that, was, that was a great opportunity to actually do something, uh, create sort of a legacy type of deal with my son. Um, and uh, recently, I've been I've been singing in a lot of a lot of bars and stuff sure. like that. Doing a lot of uh, I, I love old school R and B, mm -hmm. man. And and uh, I have a kind of encyclopedic mind when it comes to lyrics. Okay, you know I remember lyrics like I'll, I'll, I'll brag about it like nobody else I know. Okay. So so you know when you put a, when you put me on a mic and you're waiting uh -huh. for me to flub these lyrics, it's I like no it. man. <laughs> I got these. They're, no karaoke they're, they're, they're in here. Oh, that's it. You know. <laughs> in fact, when I do karaoke, I always do a song that's out of my range, or you know, a song by a female or something. Sure. You know, as a as a challenge. Check so, it out. so uh, I have a friend that uh, wants me to do some duets with her. And matter of fact, she used to work on our show as okay. a security guard. And uh, and so she uh, she recently called me and said, Hey, you know, we need to go in the studio and do some duets, man, some old school duets. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Cool. And uh, and you know that that's uh, that's kind of what the future holds. I continue cool. to uh, go for roles, and uh, I've, I've done a number of small films, mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> three of which uh, three of three of which I played a judge in. Okay. You know, so so uh, so so somebody sees the range. Uh -huh. You know, somebody sees the possibilities. Sure. And uh, you know, I'm looking forward to doing more of the same, you know. Finally, as we close, um, what do you want to tell young people? Wow. And people looking to make a difference. What do you Man. want to tell them? Man, um, okay, so the philosophy that I usually go by is Gandhi's philosophy. You got to be the change that you want to see in the world. Um, there is so much um, ennui and so much uh, um, 
there's so much indifference going on in our world right sure. now, you know, um, um, in, in regards to violence, in regards to um, sex outside of marriage, um, in regards to uh, 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 incarceration and the educational system. You know, um, they say that, that um, by third grade, uh, most kids have decided what type of moral agent they want to be mm -hmm. in the world. And so it's important um, for parents and mentors and people who want to be mentors or who haven't thought about being mentors to consider becoming mentors, becoming fathers to the fatherless and becoming mothers to the motherless. Um, you know, it's, uh, I've always contended that it's as important that I make sure that my kids' friends are fathered just as much as my kids are fathered. Uh, and uh, so right now, um, in fact, um, uh, we're, we're kind of going through something in my family. My son's best friend, uh, it was discovered that he had stage four cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, I just rallied the family around and, and it was different people from the community. Sure. And we had to create a village and we had to create, his name is Isaiah, and we, we created what I call Team Isaiah. Uh, so that, you know, and our focus is how to get him uh, whatever help we can get him, even though this is stage four, incurable, untreatable cancer, we don't give up because we know that if God hasn't signed off on him, we don't sign off on him. We, 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 don't, we don't keep fighting until we're tired. We keep fighting until it's done. Um, and so uh, that's, my, that's what I want to tell uh, the young folks is keep on pushing, keep on pushing. God has a purpose for you. There's a reason that he put you on this earth. And if you can discover that purpose, and work towards developing the skill sets and sure. the passion and the talents necessary in order to fulfill that purpose. There's nothing better you can do in life. And uh, and 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 be careful who you hang out with. You know. You know. Uh, 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 I had a pastor that used to say, "Your crowd determines your course." Mm -hmm. And so you got to be careful who you hang out with. You know. Uh, you don't take swimming lessons from drowning men. Sure. You, you take swimming lessons, you want them from Michael Phelps. Sure. You know? sure, sure, <laughs> and so, sure. And so hang with the best. Mm -hmm. Well, you have uh, done a legendary job. Thank you for your time and your talent and for sharing your story with us. Appreciate you talking Appreciate to me. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you so Pleasure. much. Yeah, Absolutely. Sincerely. All right.